I don't want to call myself a sculptor, um, although my work is very sculptural. I am interested in, in ceramics, I'm interested in pottery, and pottery ultimately is one of the art forms that's probably most universal. You know, almost every, every culture in the world has a tradition of pottery. So, you know, why not call yourself a potter and work universally um, rather than saying, oh, well, I'm this ceramic artist and by then absolutely defining yourself within a European cultural context. The, the one 3D printer I've designed myself, um, so uh, having designed it, I thought, well, I may as well just publish it as an open source project on the internet. A, a little naively at first, just thinking, oh, it'll bring a bit of traffic to my, um, my website, but um, it's, uh, it's become very popular. So that's, you know, brought me a lot of publicity, and now I get uh, requests literally from around the world to go and do courses in 3D printing. In 2007, um, I was actually invited to a seminar in, in Denmark that was around uh, using computers, digital tools, or, or, or digital uh, techniques within ceramics. Um, and there I met some people who were using 3D printing designers, using 3D printers as rapid prototyping. So ultimately, the ceramic 3D printing is very, very close to coil building. These are the pieces that would have been, you know, I just holding a small syringe would slowly coil build, coil build with the syringe. But you can see how you can start, you know, I'm starting to make forms that were much more re reminiscent of sort of digital forms necessary than normal, you know, uh, ceramic techniques. I mean, there's a wonderful irony that here we have the most, you know, up to date ceramic technique that all it is, is computerized coil building, and coil building being one of the oldest forms of pottery known to man, you know, and made around the world, and that is to roll out a coil of clay and then slowly just layer by layer build it up. So I'd been building really big objects by that technique um, in response to what I'd visualized on computer. Uh, and now I just wanted to be able to get these computer forms and get the computer to guide the coil building basically. The interest in using well code and using computers goes back to 1999. Um, I was then commissioned by the, the Suffolk Library Services to produce, well myself and 10 other artists, to produce CD-ROMs about our practice. Uh, and you know, the underlying premise was, uh, you know, let's see what creative thinkers, artists will do with this new technology back in 1999, new technology computers. It's form that I'm particularly interested in, in or, or you know, sculptural form rather than, say, ceramic surface. So um, I just became really intrigued as to how you could manipulate form in computers. I mean, as a way, architects were doing wonderful things with computer modeling. Uh, and I thought, well, can't you know, potters be doing a similar sort of thing? You know, it's, it's now hard to put yourself back into 2007. It was before the big bubble of 3D printing. You know, one just heard about these very expensive machines that could print in three dimensions. So I came back 2007 and started researching on the internet to see what there was because the whole time I didn't want to generate my 3D files and send them off to a bureau to be printed. I wanted a printer that could sit in my studio next to my pottery wheel, you know, I, because I wanted to use it as a tool and not just as a manufacturing, you know, technique. The whole sound surface thing was really, in, uh, there I was interested to see whether you could come up with a visual representation 
um, that had any correlation with the audio uh, representation. I've taken uh, a basic vase shape, or I've coded a basic vase shape, and then um, I run the music, and the, each interlude is about four minutes long, but the height of the pot represents the length of the piece of music. Uh, and then the four interludes have got very much a different character to them. One is Sunday morning, so it's very, you know, much more lyrical. And then another is called the storm, so it's much more spiky. And you can very much see the change in character of the sound on the actual surface of the vases. It harks back to my time in Africa where working, my father working for um, a game preservation board, we lived in a game reserve. Uh, it was seeing that, you know, natural phenomena uh, and then as one grows up realizing, you know, that that natural code, that all, you know, things grow out of code, out, you know, natural code. And then, um, you know, in the last 10 years realizing for myself how computer code was starting to mimic natural codes. Um, so this got me interested in, in the computer coding as to whether you could start growing forms in a computer um, and then you know generate ceramic forms and then 3D print them. So uh, you know very often I get asked the question, uh, well why did you get involved in 3D printing? It was more because I, I had lots of stuff in my computer and I wanted to get it out of my computer in the best or the easiest way to get it out of the computer or the only way to get it out of the computer. Uh, is to, to use a digital tool, i.e. a 3D printer, to get it out. Art is, is very similar to science. Scientists are trying to, in um, a very rational manner, understand the world around us. Artists are doing the same, but in a much more poetic manner, is to understand the world around us. So where mathematicians can uh, sort of look at patterns, as much as artists do. Uh, and then I want to bring those together. And um, you know, mathematicians often talk about the beauty in, 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 a, in a mathematical formula. You can certainly see the, the beauty in natural structures. And that's what the maths is referring to, is those structures, you know, Fibonacci systems and then golden section, you know, what's going on there? Um, now, all that said, I think what is really interesting is when you're getting to that point that um, if it was absolutely mathematically structured, there wouldn't be the variety there is. There's always just a little bit of sli slippage. And I think this is where kind of you know, artistic poetry, artistic license comes in so much more. Um, that you can start to include that, that sort of slight randomness or that slippage. Uh, so you get difference. Uh, and you know, I think it's human nature that we all respond to yeah, we kind of want sameness, but we also respond to difference. You, you aren't in control all the time, uh, and very often uh, the more exciting things happen is when you almost surprise yourself by doing something a little bit wrong. with the icebergs really interesting is that you then it's the same apparent randomness of the deterioration or the melting of ice or the way um, earth might erode um, you know there's it it is random but it is always controlled by changing the parameters you change the form I mean that's the essence of it
this point of tradition keeps coming up. It's as though these new ways of working are, are a problem for tradition. Anyway, I, I think I'm a great traditionalist. You know, and for, for me, tradition is, is, is not set in any one time. It's an ongoing thing. Um, that at one stage there was only coil building, uh, and then somebody invented the pottery wheel. You know, the pottery wheel is the tradition, but in actual fact, this 3D printer is almost going back to coil building. Um, so it's just, it's, you know, a continuum, it's all part of the same thing. So there's, there's always this balance between, you know, a traditional background, but moving it forward. I think it's really important that as, you know, an artist, you want to be producing articles that are an expression of your time, using the technology of your time. That's surely tradition, isn't it? So I'm a traditionalist.